Burns writes sweet words. Aye, and those words came right from his heart when he lost his heel in Mary. Tis another lassie he needs to brighten his life. I know the lassie for him, and one that's fair daft about the poor laddie. But the sad part of it is, he doesn't know a thing about it. To Jean Armour, you mean? Aye, tis Jean Armour. Mousy, thou art no thy lane, and proving foresight may be vain. The best laid schemes of mice and men gang after glee, and leave us not but grief and pain for promised joy. Tis but my thoughts riddled in verse, Jeannie. The best laid schemes of mice and men, t'was that way with you and your here and Mary. Aye. Now I've got to seek for love all over again. Tis not the seeking should trouble you, tis the finding. You're blind like all men, Robbie. I'll find my love one of these days. I'm going away, Jeannie. Soon, Robbie. On the morrow. Are you going far, Robbie? I'm taking coach for Edinburgh. I'll have you understand I've got a publisher there, the new. A man who's making a book of all my verses. Aye, uh, and when you're in Edinburgh, the society will take you up. All the fine ladies will set their cups at you. Well, won't you be glad for me, then? Oh, it's not that I'll be caring about it. Well, but you'll come to say goodbye when the coach leaves, won't you, Jeannie? Nay, I'll be busy tomorrow. Goodbye, Robbie Burns. I'll be expecting you at the coach, Jeannie. I'll no be there, Robbie Burns. There's no room for you but inside, Mr. Burns. Good enough. Good luck to you, Robbie. Hey, thanks. Oh, Jeannie, you did come to say goodbye to me after all. No, not to say goodbye to you, Mr. Burns. It was just that I was passing by and I uh, stopped out of curiosity. <laughs> You're a lovely liar. Goodbye, Bonnie Jean. Then not forget me. Forget you, Becoming bolder day by day, Mr. Burns. Bolder is as bolder does. But you might call me Robbie, I think. Robbie? Yeah. Had I looked the wide world over, I'd never have found another like ye. Is it the poet in you who speaks, or is it the man? Tis the man. There's the return call. We'll have to go. It was your eyes that tempted me. Will the poet tell me that he loves me? Let the man do it. Aye. Tell me how much. More than yesterday, less than tomorrow. <laughs> how beautiful!
Mr. Burns speak one of his pretty poems for us. If Mr. Burns is so busy, I'm in no mood for it tonight, Lord Craig. Oh, please. You said you'd written a new one, and you promised to speak it just for me. I but just for you, lass, not for this grand company. Perhaps his brain is muddled, for his tongue is thick from the wine he's drunk. <laughs> Ross. I dare say Master Burns is not used to champagne. Nay, that's true. I'm more used to ale. Ale's a man's drink. Is it ale that gives you such a high color, Mr. Burns? No, oh, that's from plowing in his fields, I think. Oh, Mr. Burns, do you really plow your own fields? <laughs> Aye, I'm a farmer. Tis an honest toil. I thought you were a poet. A man can be a poet and a farmer too, Lady Argyle. Can he? Do farmers really think? Aye, they think. If you could read my thoughts right now, they'd fair blister your ladyship. <laughs> <laughs> now I know why his face is red. Nonsense, Ross. The man is blushing. Aye, I'm doing that too. I'm blushing with shame. Don't be ashamed, Mr. Burns. We make all allowances for you. I beg your pardon. Do say a pretty piece, Mr. Burns. Something just for me. Aye, just for you, my lady. Oh, what the power of the gift to give us to see ourselves as others see us. Thank you. A very pretty compliment. It was not intended as a compliment, Lady Argyle. You can hardly expect the manners of a gentleman from a common peasant. Be quiet, Ross. The man was baited to it. I've heard Mr. Burns new poem, though my niece has not. And I'm asking him to read it to us now. Oh, yes, Mr. Burns, do tell us what the poor people are doing. <laughs> <laughs> Aye, I'll tell you. Is there for honest poverty that hings his head and ah that? The coward slave, we pass him by. We dare be poor for ah that. For ah that and ah that. Our toil's obscure and ah that. The rank is but the guinea stump. The man's a god for ah that. But though unhamely fair we dine, Wear hard and grey and all that. Give fools their silks and knaves their wine. The man's a man for all that. For all that and all that. Their tinsel show and all that. The honest man, though e'er say poor, is king of men for all that. You see, yon Birky called a lord, what struts and stares and all that. Though hundreds worship at his ward, he's but a queef for all that. For ah that and ah that, his ribbon star and ah that. The man of independent mind, he looks and laughs at ah that. A prince can make a belted knight, a marquis, duke and ah that. An honest man's a boon his might, he'd faith him on a far that. For ah that and ah that, their dignities and ah that. The pith of sense and pride of worth. Are higher rank than are that. Lord Craig, this is an intended insult to all your guests. Send that country lout back to his village. Aye, he'll go. But this country lout will be remembered when every man and woman in this room has been forgotten. I hope you liked my poem, lass. Liked it? I think you've forgotten just exactly what you are, Mr. Burns. You've gone too far, Mr. Burns. You've insulted me and you've insulted my friends. There's only one answer to that. I dare say you know what that means. Aye, I know. And do you accept the challenge? I accept with pleasure. I'll act as your second, Mr. Burns. Thank you kindly, sir. As the challenge man, I have the choice of weapons. You have? Then here's my choice. That's the weapon of a clod. Can't you fight like a gentleman? Peel off your coat and fight like a man. Take your bottle into the hall. Aye, it is enough, lad. Perhaps it will make a man of him for all that. To think that a daughter of mine should be ill and green sick with pining for a man who spends his time writing silly rhymes. You'll be forgetting Robbie Burns, do you hear? 
can I help it where my help lies? Oh, the disgrace of it. You're daft to go on thinking of him. Jock Wilson's acres are waiting for a mistress, and you're the lass he wants. Robbie will be back someday. Understand me this. You'll marry Jock Wilson before the week is out and no quibbling about it. Think that over, lass, for I mean it every word. Understanding with the last joke. Uh, is she aching for me? Aye, she's aching. But hey, no fear. We'll ease her ache before the week is out. You're a very happy man the day, Mr. Burns. I am happy. My heart and soul are singing. I'm going home, man. I'm going home. <laughs> You'll be just in time to miss the wedding. Whose wedding? Joke Wilson's, no less. No! <laughs> aye, aye. <laughs> He's going to marry Jean Armour today. Jean Armour? You're daft. Oh, I'm no daft. No, it was a rain father that told me I'd get there in time to drink the health of the bride. That'll be too late. We've got to get there before that. Oh, it can't be done. We took the high road, and that's a long pull and a hard then one. Then take the low road. No, no, no. We all live ruts and holes. It can't be done. Aye, it's got to be done. Look, man, look. Every last sou I have in my purse is yours if you get me there before the words I spoke. Well, I'll try. <laughs> but it's like you'll be more dead than alive. Hold tight! Whee! You'd never forget me. It was you who forgot, Robbie. Could old acquaintance be forgot? It was that that opened my eyes and brought me back to you. Man, man, you cannot stop a wedding this way. I'm not stopping a wedding, Donald Armour. I'm trying to make it a real one. Would you marry me, Jeannie Lass, for old Lang Syne? Would you, Jeannie Lass? <laughs> 